I was not expecting to make the 2022 Monster High tween musical reboot my entire personality, but here we are. Actually, who am I kidding? Yes, I was. This is like straight up my alley. Hello, everyone. My name is Caitlin, and welcome back to my channel. So for those of you who may not know, the very first live-action Monster High movie premiered on Nickelodeon and Paramount Plus last Thursday. And I personally was very excited for this movie. For those of you who may not know, I am a huge DCOM fan, and so this movie just seemed like it was made for me. Like, did it seem very over-the-top and camp? Yes, but that's just like the kind of stuff that I'm into. The main criticism I had seen for this movie going into it was that everyone thought that it was cringy, and so I was like, sign me up. I usually tend to love the things that everyone else finds cringy. Now a little background about me and Monster High since I'm sure this has attracted the stands and so I just want to make my status known before we jump right into this review. I actually didn't grow up with Monster High, it was a little bit after my time and it just didn't really pique my interest when it did come out. I personally got into it a couple years ago when I watched all of the movies for my channel and so my knowledge on the franchise kind of starts and ends with the movies. But I love learning more about it from you guys so feel free to educate me on anything I say in this video in the comments down below. Now in case you haven't watched one of my movie reviews before, I tend to split it off into a few different sections and so we have four to go over this time around. First we'll jump into a non-spoiler section and then we'll dive deeper into the plot, the characters, and the ships. And so yeah, with all that being said, let's just jump right into it. So Monster High the movie follows Claudine Wolf as she gets ready to attend her very first year at Monster High, a school made exclusively for teen monsters. However, Claudine has a secret in that she is half human, and with humans forbidden from attending Monster High, Claudine, along with her two brand new friends, Frankie and Draculaura, search for a way to conceal her human side. And like I said, this movie is also a musical, which means we have 11 brand new songs to accompany the story as well. And the ending of this movie does propose a sequel, so who knows, a whole live action Monster High film series could potentially be in the works. I mean, assuming that this one does well, of course. Now, like I said, you guys know that I'm a huge DCOM fan, and while this movie isn't made by Disney Channel, I feel like it's hard to ignore the similarities. Like, I feel like they're definitely the same genre. And I feel like you guys are aware of the fact that fans have accused Disney of stealing the ideas of Ever After High and Monster High for their own film series, Descendants and Zombies. And so part of me feels like Nickelodeon and Monster High doing the same thing back to them just kind of like feels right to me. Now, I want to go as far as to say that if you are a fan of Monster High, then you will enjoy this movie just because that was the case for me. However, I am aware of the the fact that fans can be really protective of their thing, especially when it is like a reboot sort of situation. So I won't go that far, but I will say that if you are a fan of tween shows and movies, particularly musical ones, then I think you will really enjoy this movie. I personally thought that it was a lot of fun and that it did a great job of harnessing the heart of the Monster High franchise. Obviously some changes were made to the previous Monster High universe that we're all familiar with, but I personally felt like every change that was made in this movie was done for the benefit of it and really made sense to me story-wise. Now I believe that is all I can say about this movie without spoiling it so if you're thinking about checking it out go give it a watch and then come back or if you are a regular viewer of this channel who usually enjoys the things that I enjoy go give it a watch you are in for a treat I'm really excited for you to experience the wonder that is Monster High the movie um, but yes yeah, so with all that being said let's move on to the plot So I don't know about you guys, but I personally tried very hard to not really read much or look up much about this movie before watching it. I kind of prefer going in blind because then everything just feels a lot more exciting and new to me, and so I personally watched the trailer and then the snippets of coming out of the dark, but that was it. And so the first thing that I was very surprised by was the fact that this movie was centered around Claudine. I feel like Frankie usually tends to be the focal point of the series, at least in terms of introductions, and so I was just very pleasantly surprised to see that that was not the case here. Which I honestly should have realized by like the cover art of the movie, but it is what it is. And we'll talk more about Claudine when we get to the characters section, but in terms of like plot device, I feel like out of the three girls, her being the one that is half human definitely makes the most sense. And as much as I love Claudine in this movie and her dad and their relationship and the whole backstory with her mom, I am a little bit disappointed that we had to sacrifice all of her siblings to get that story. But I haven't given up hope yet. I feel like Claude and Howleen could still exist in this universe, just maybe not related to Claudine. Oh, or they could be like cousins or something. I feel like that would be fun. I'd be okay with that. But still, I love the whole half human plot line. I felt like it worked really well here as an intro into this new Monster High world. I immediately was like, oh, we're doing like a Jekyll and Hyde thing. And then when he actually got brought up, I just loved it even more. Which speaking of, let's talk more about this hot teacher and that whole mess because I was basically smitten by that man the moment he appeared on screen. Like, let's be honest, I'm 24 and so I'm not gonna be swooning over Deuce. Like Mr. Comos was where it was at for me. Like he could sing, he could dance, and then he was being such a supportive teacher. Um, and then we get to the end of the film in which I ended up feeling silly for not seeing it sooner. But what can I say? I was just blinded 
buy my attraction for him and then like the potential of him being evil was just like so far out of my mind. And so it's safe to say that I went through many waves of emotions during that reveal scene. At first I was very much so just caught by surprise, like my mouth just fell open and I feel like it remained open throughout the entirety of that scene, but for various reasons. At first I was like, yay, he's part human, like I love this for Claudine, I love having the hot teacher on our side. And then I was like, oh wait, unless he's lying. And then my trust in him immediately started to waver. And then he drank the potion thing and I was like, oh no, is he Hyde? But then no, he's Hyde's son. And then he just kept getting less and less attractive as the movie went on until he ended up turning into stone for the rest of eternity. But it wasn't even just him changing form that made him less attractive. Like we then realized how dumb he is. Like he's been searching for this lab for who knows how long, but then these girls found it in like what, the first night that they searched for it? And then he was just all aggression and no strategy. Although I will say that I did a appreciate that it was more of like a revenge plot. Like I'm gonna take down Monster High instead of just like, I'm gonna get rid of my humanness. Like that wouldn't have been as good. But nonetheless, I still wrote down near the end of the film. I'm not really too sure when, but at some point I said, I'm sad that the hot teacher is evil. And it's true. I was really looking forward to seeing him in later installments. If this movie does get picked up for some sequels, like I love him as like a mentor figure and whatnot, but unfortunately he sucks. So that will not be the case. But enough about Comos, let's move on to the song. So I would usually discuss the music in its own category in a review like this, but to be honest, it's actually Canadian Thanksgiving this weekend, and so I'm kind of crunched for time with this review, and I haven't really had the time to digest the soundtrack to the best of my ability yet. But based off of my first impressions of the songs from the movie itself, when I watched it, I absolutely loved the music. Coming out of the dark is definitely a standout. I also personally love True Monster Heart, and not just for Comos, I just thought it was a bop, and I love a good song that spells things, I guess. And those few songs in there that were just kind of like in between scenes that were sung by the characters still, I really enjoyed because I feel like it makes for a fuller album, which I like. The more songs, the better, if you ask me. I also just feel like I can't be the only one that felt like the Out of the Dark reprise just gave me some strong, if only reprise vibes, but I was okay with it. I think my one critique about the songs in this movie would be in regards to some of the bigger dance numbers, though. The finale one was a lot better, I'll give them that, but I felt like the opening sequence felt a bit empty, if that makes sense. I feel like DCOMs have a way of making things look a lot fuller and larger than life in a way, and I just don't really think Nickelodeon is there yet, or at least it just didn't really feel that way in that first dance number, but that's just my own personal opinion. I also felt like Deuce's voice wasn't really the strongest, but I will give the actor props if that was actually him singing, which I assume that it is, and he was a lot stronger in the group numbers, in my opinion. Moving on though, I did also want to talk about the wardrobe and just like overall aesthetics of this movie. And I feel like the wardrobe in particular in this movie has been criticized for being a bit like chaotic and incohesive, but I personally didn't really mind it. I feel like it's hard for this movie because I feel like it's clear that they are adapting from the dolls as a opposed to like a Descendants, for example, where the movie comes first and then the dolls come second. I mean, I could be wrong. I don't really know that much about the logistics. So maybe they did do this movie first for the revamp and then the dolls came after, but I highly doubt that. Like Monster High, at the end of the day, is a doll line first and foremost. And so a lot of the looks that we see in this movie are just straight up adaptions of the new dolls, which like obviously is going to be a hard thing to translate. And one thing I feel like the zombie series, for example, has over Monster High is that they were able to establish each group a lot better. I feel like the looks feel a lot more cohesive cohesive in that film because we're dealing with groups of creatures like the aliens or the werewolves and luckily for them all of those groups of creatures share a similar sort of fashion sense and color scheme. Whereas with Monster High I feel like it's a lot more individuality based which makes sense because we are dealing with individual dolls but I feel like this definitely hinders the cohesiveness of the school from a visual standpoint once you put it into a live action setting. It was also just such a colorful movie and I haven't really decided if I think that's a good thing or a bad thing yet. Actually, no, I have. I feel like they definitely could have toned down the colors just a little bit. But I understand that they were trying to make these characters look like the dolls and these new dolls are very bright and colorful. I just personally felt like it didn't always fit with the backdrops of this film. In terms of fashions, I feel like the only ones that really stood out to me would be Frankie's second look, Draculaura's first look. Actually, no, I feel like most of Draculaura's looks throughout this movie I enjoyed. And then also Laguna, but I could be a little bit biased just because Laguna has always been one of my own personal favorites. Oh, and also Deuce. I feel like he always looked really good too. And I enjoyed his little glasses and beans combo. I also thought that it was really neat how they showed all of that behind the scenes stuff at the end and it kind of makes you feel bad for judging any of their design choices when you see just like how much hard work that they put into it so definitely a smart move on their end. And this is more so just in regards to the overall feel of this movie but it definitely gave me some strong Halloween vibes and it makes me wonder if we do get a sequel if we'll have to wait for Halloween time once again. But speaking of sequel I am just so excited I really hope that this movie does get picked up for a second one and the fact that it would be about Draculaura just makes me so happy like I am so on 
on board for this. Like, I want seven live action Monster High movies all about each main character. But that's the great thing about this franchise is that it can literally just keep going on and on and I will just eat up every bit of it. But I believe that that is all I have to say about the plot, so let's move on to the characters. So starting off once again with Claudine, I feel like it's safe to say that she is very much so a different character than her 2010 counterpart. I don't even know how to describe it, but I feel like my main thing would be that I see the original Claudine as kind of like this cooler older sister in a way, whereas I see this Claudine as much more insecure and cautious, probably because of her like half human secret thing, which I personally feel like is what made her be such a great protagonist in this movie because it resulted in a much more relatable character who was almost like charming in a way. As far as appearances go, I gotta be honest, I just didn't really love Claudine's style hers is probably my least favorite out of the group. I also just felt she didn't really look that much like a werewolf. Like when the kids in the skate park screamed at her, I was like, why are they freaking out? She just looks like she's wearing like a cat ear headband. I guess the ears moved. So I guess that would have been like, whoa, or her fangs maybe. I don't know. Moving on to Frankie though. First of all, I just thought it was so fun to see Cece in something again, as I personally haven't seen them at anything since they played Smackle in Girl Meets World. And I don't know about you guys, but I could definitely sense some similarities between Smackle and Frankie, which I personally thought was really neat. They're both a bit socially awkward and struggle with making new friends, which I thought in this movie in particular, the representation was just so great to see. And I personally felt like the non-binary thing was just done really tastefully in this movie, which I'm glad about because that was definitely a fear I had going into this movie. But I believe those two mentions that we saw of it beforehand were actually the only times it was brought up in the movie, but I could be wrong. Either way though, it definitely felt a lot more natural in context and I really enjoyed it. And I understand the criticism of people being like, if Frankie is only 15 days old, how do they know all about pronouns, but they don't know about a high five. But I personally feel like like by saying that you're kind of ignoring just how important pronouns are. For me, it makes sense that the pronouns of their child would be something that the rents would take into account while creating them so that when they are born, that would be one of the first conversations that they have with them. And I don't know about you guys, but I personally feel like if I just like came to be as a teenager, even if I was only a couple days old, I would still be able to understand myself and how I identify, especially if I had parents who were presenting all of the options to me. Like it kind of just seems like a no brainer. As far as fashion goes, I usually enjoyed what Frankie was wearing. Like I said, their second fit was probably my favorite fit out of everybody's in the entire film. Their hair was great too. I loved it. I feel like the main thing that stood out to me about them appearance wise was their teeth, which might be a weird thing to say, but I just personally felt like the contrast of like their blue skin kind of made their teeth look a bit like eerie in a way, which I guess kind of works because like they're supposed to be a monster and they're supposed to be a little bit creepy. So yeah, never mind. I take that back. I guess good job on Frankie's teeth. I don't know. I feel like this is weird to talk about, but I can't be the only one that was thinking about their teeth the whole time. Moving on to Draculaura though. This is another character that I felt like like seemed very different from their 2010 counterpart. When I think about Draculaura, I personally think of this like bubbly, cute little vampire. And so when we were first introduced to her and she was kind of like standoffish and rude, I was just kind of like, who are you? But once the story started to unfold, I felt like it all began to make a lot more sense to me and I ended up really liking what they did with her character. I felt like her character arc made that friendship song moment hit harder and I liked her little witchcraft interest. I felt like it really suited her. And like I said, in terms of looks, I pretty much enjoyed everything that Draculaura wore. I felt like she killed it throughout this movie. And then I don't really have as much to say about the other characters, so I figured we can talk about them all at once. I feel like Cleo is probably the most on brand, the Cleo that we know and love, and I was really happy to see her get that redemption arc near the end of the film, and so I just really hope that they stick to it moving forward. I was surprised to see that they chose to have Laguna be her bestie instead of Gulia, but then I guess if they wanted to have Gulia included in those graveyard scenes, then it would kind of make sense that she would be more on their side than Cleo's. I was also a bit disappointed to see that Gulia speaks now, and I also didn't really feel like she looked that much like a zombie, if that makes sense. Like, I didn't even recognize her at first. Oh, I also felt like Laguna talked more like Draculaura than Draculaura did in this movie. Like in the original movies, Draculaura has this cute little accent that she obviously doesn't have in this movie, but then Laguna had an accent that was reminding me of the animated Draculaura's accent. I don't know, could just be me. I would need to like compare them side by side, but I felt like they definitely sounded similar. Oh, I also thought that Deuce was great. I loved his little backstory with like him wanting to be a better person. And I personally felt like he achieved that. Like I felt like he was a great guy in this movie. I also loved that we got to see a little bit more of the parents. I loved Claudine's dad. He was so sweet. And then Draculaura's dad is basically a decom legend. I recognized him the moment I saw him and I thought that he did a great job. I also usually end up praising Monster High for this, but something that I do love about this franchise is how they're actually able to showcase their monster abilities. Like they're not just monsters for a fashion statement. They all have special abilities that we actually get to see them utilize, which just makes it that much more fun. Like it's a monster world. So let's explore that and what it means. And I feel like they did that. I will say though, sometimes I felt like the characters talked like they were reading from the back of their doll boxes. I feel like Claudine did it the most. And one example, 
example would be when she says to Deuce, I think, something along the lines of, like, just believe in who you are, not who people expect you to be. And it's just, like, that's great. I also agree. But I wish we could find a way to convey that message a bit more naturally without you just, like, saying it word for word. But I did like the quote at the end. I forget exactly what it was, but it was something inspirational about being yourself. And it kind of reminded me of the old Barbie movies where they would have a quote that Barbie said in the movie at the end of the credits. And it was always something inspirational and nice that I enjoyed. Um, but yeah, I believe that is all I have to say about the characters. So with all that being said, let's move on to our last category, which is, of course, the ships. So obviously Claudine and Deuce kind of stole the show in this movie and I am very happy that I wasn't spoiled about the fact that that was the route they were going to take things in because I doubt if I would have been as on board with it if I would have known about it beforehand. But I personally feel like it worked out really well. Like I definitely would never have thought to pair these two characters together, but these new versions of these characters I feel like complement each other really well. I loved how nice he was to her. I loved their little date and musical moment that they had together. And I'm just really curious to see if we do get more live action films, how their story is going to unfold from here. Also the eyes line was just so good and smooth. I don't remember exactly what he said, but it was something along the lines of like, at least I finally got to look into your eyes. And I was just like, oh, that is so adorable. Also, not gonna lie, definitely thought that they were going to kiss at the end of the film, but then they ended up going for a hug instead, which I guess makes sense, but I was a little bit disappointed. But we can't talk about Claudine and Deuce without also talking about Cleo and Deuce. And I'll be honest, part of me was rooting for a little switcheroo in the end there where Cleo and Deuce would actually become the real end game because I just love them so much in the original. Actually, no, that's kind of a lie. I don't actually love them that much in the original. I just really liked them in Boo York, Boo York, and so that has me rooting for them. But on the flip side, I am also open to seeing Cleo get her own love story with somebody else, especially if it's Gulia. Imagine how iconic that would be. I would be so there for that. Now, there weren't really any other canon ships in this movie to talk about, but there definitely were a few non-canon ones that came to mind for me. Claudine and Cleo would definitely be a fun enemies to lovers moment, as well as Claudine and Draculaura, and I feel like they definitely had a few great moments in this movie. But I actually have very high hopes for the series and the fact that I feel like we actually will get some canon non-straight ships. Like, I feel like the potential's right there. But I also just have to say that I really, really hope that Claude does exist in this universe because I would love to see him and Draculaura together once again. They're one of my personal faves, and so just imagine him in a sequel about Draculaura and they also fall in love, like I would be so there for it. But now that we've gone over all my thoughts on the ships, I believe that is all I have to say about the movie as well. And if it wasn't obvious already, I loved it. Honestly, my main feeling was just like, finally, like I've wanted to connect with Monster High for so long because I was so intrigued by the franchise and everything about it seemed like something that I would like, but the animated movies just didn't really do it for me. And I just didn't really care that much about the doll line. And then I watched this movie and I was like, finally, there it is. That's my emotional connection with this franchise. I'm finally in invested now and yeah it's just funny what a tween musical can do to me so yes that is how i feel about monster high the movie but i want to know how you guys felt about this movie so don't forget to let me know in the comments down below i can't wait to read all about it anyways cater tots that is all i have to say for today i hope you'll have a wonderful day and i'll talk to you very very soon man i feel like i definitely am over my covid now but after sitting here and talking for two hours i feel like my voice is gone but you probably can't tell i hope you can't tell um, but yeah, that's about all that's going on with me. I'm excited for Thanksgiving, mainly just so I can see my family. By the time this goes up, I will have already seen them. Oh, I will have also already seen Sabrina Carpenter because she's coming to Toronto on Monday. So I'm very excited for that. So yeah, nothing else to update on my part, but I'll see you guys later. Bye.